الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحبكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Alright, so <coughs> the hadith that we are going to cover today So the hadith that we are going to cover today is uh, the hadith number 3 of the book which is on page number 27 It says Al-mar'u ma'a man ahab and it is narrated from Bukhari and from Muslim both so the translation goes something like this that Al-Mar'u a person or a man will be with those Ma'a that if Ma'a means will be with Man whom Ahabba he loves so Al-Mar'u Ma'a Man Ahabba That a person will be with whom he loves So there is, there are a couple of stories that are related to this hadith And there are different narrations to that One of the narrations is that a Sahabi A companion of the Prophet Sallallahu He came to the Prophet Sallallahu And he asked him a question to say this Sahabi asked Prophet Sallallahu a question and that question was that O oh Messenger of Allah Sallallahu when is the day of judgment? and the Prophet Sallallahu rather than replying to the, end, to the question he asked him a counter question and the question was that what have you prepared for the Day of Judgment? So, now this is a very interesting statement because this person is asking something but Prophet ﷺ purposely, he did not reply to that question but he said that what have you prepared for that day? And this person, the Sahabi radiallahu an, he said, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa I have not prepared much for the Day of Judgment. So, I have, I have not done a lot of extra fasting and a lot of extra prayers. So, I have not, this is according to his own uh, judgment of himself. He said, O Messenger of Allah, I have not done much for the Day of Judgment. But one thing that I know that I have is that I love Allah and His Messenger وسلم, more than anything else. And after listening to this statement of the Sahabi radiallahu and Prophet sallallahu alaihi gave this statement, which was al maru ma'man ahabba, that everyone, a person or man, will be with those whom he loves. And when the, it was a gathering of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu jamain, and when the Sahaba around like around the Prophet Sallallahu when they heard this statement from the Prophet Sallallahu they said that we were never so joyous in our life in our lives like we were never so happy in our lives before that day why because everybody every single person that was there they knew that they, they loved Allah and his messenger more than anybody else in uh, in, in their lives, even more than their own selves. So this is a very, very interesting uh, story, and it highlights a few things. 
The point number one that this, this whole story highlights is that the condition, the state of the Sahaba Karam radiallahu anhu ajma'een who are our masters, who are our role models, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an فَإِنْ آمَنُوا مِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ that if they have, if people believe like the Sahaba believed, right? And we have spoken about Sahaba Karam radiallahu anhu ajma'een that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us that we take them as our role models in our lives. So they are our, they, they are the goal that we have to achieve. We, we have to become like them. This is our goal, right? So this incident, this story, it, it tells us something about the state, the condition of the Sahaba Karam radiallahu anhu ajma'in. And what was that? Number one, that this Sahabi is coming all the way to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to ask him this question O oh, Messenger of Allah, when is the Day of Judgment? So this highlights that they were always thinking about the Day of Judgment So much so it comes in a hadith, in a hadith that when clouds used to come over Madinah Manawara the Sahaba used to rush to the Masjid used to rush to the mosques and they were afraid that possibly this, this, is, this is because the Day of Judgment is coming. So they were so worried about the Day of Judgment, they thought that it's very near. They realized that it's coming very soon. So everybody was thinking about the Day of Judgment, right? This, was, this is number one, point number one. This was their state. That they were always, always thinking about when is the Day of Judgment coming, right? Number two, that they were always worried about what will become of them on the Day of Judgment. Right? And that is the reason that they were always looking for the Day of Judgment, because they were worried about that what will become of them on the Day of Judgment. Right? And the third point is that when Prophet wasallam he asked them this question, that what have you prepared for the Day of Judgment? And this was a Sahabi, we should, we should realize, right? He had a pure heart, he had that Qalb Salim, the pure heart, he had a pure self, right? He must have, I mean, because he was always worried about the Day of Judgment, so he must be preparing a lot for that as well, for sure, there's no doubt about that. But, the point to note is that he never thought about his deeds as sufficient. When Prophet ﷺ asked him that what have you prepared for the Day of Judgment, he didn't say, Oh Prophet of Allah, I, have, I pray all night and get up for tahajjud and I fast every Monday and Thursday and I do this and do that. He could have said all of that, right? But he thought in his mind that I am not going to fool Allah and His Messenger, right? They know my state. Who am I going to hide? Uh, too. Right? So he, he was very honest. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I have not prepared anything. And I have not prepared any single thing for the Day of Judgment. I mean, even if I pray and I fast, what if Allah doesn't accept all these fasting and praying? What if there is no sincerity behind my fasting and my praying and my, my recitation of the Quran and the charity that I give? What if Allah doesn't accept that? Right? So he was very worried about what he did. So he was very honest. He said, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have not prepared anything. I have, not, I have nothing that I can take with me on the Day of Judgment to present to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Right? So this is the next thing, that they were critical of their own selves. They were always thinking about what are they doing. They were least concerned about what other people were doing. Right? And this are numerous examples. Numerous examples in, 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 in the in the seerah of of, uh, of the Sahaba. Right? For example, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, we know about him. He was one of the ten people who were given glad tidings to be entered into the Jannah without reckoning. Right? This was the person, radiallahu anhu, that when he used to have an opinion 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down revelation that con- and, and, and that confirmed what he was talking about initially right so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirmed through revelation that what Umar radiallahu anh is saying is right this was a sahabi right the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he himself asked Allah that oh Allah enter one of the two Umars in Islam so he was the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is the Sahabi that Prophet sallallahu said that wherever the path on which Umar uh, passes or, the, or the, the path where Umar goes, the street where Umar goes, Shaitan runs away from that street. This is a Sahabi that, I mean, who was so, who, who, was, the, who was the soldier of Islam? Right? He was, when he came into the Islam, Muslims felt that they were, now they are strong. And we can go on and on and on and on and on, right? Still, when Sayyidina, when Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told the names of the hypocrites to Sayyidina Hanzala radiallahu an. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an came to Sayyidina Hanzala. He knew that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had told these, the names of the hypocrites to Sayyidina Hanzala. And he said, you know, I know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given you the names of the hypocrites. And I also know that Prophet ﷺ has asked you not to tell these names to anybody. And I'm not here to ask you the names of the hypocrites. What I only want to know if my name is in that list. I only want to know if my name is included in that list. So this is how these people were critical of their own selves. And today we are only critical about everybody else, uh, everybody except our own selves. And this is our state. And this was the state of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu ajma'in. We are always looking for what the other, other person is doing. How that other person is entering into the class. How is that other person dressed up. How that other person is behaving. Right? And we don't, we don't look into our own selves and see what are we doing. Right? So, so this this incident, this story is very interesting. It says that he was, this Sahabi was so honest. He was saying, Oh Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm not prepared anything. Right? But one thing that he was very confident about was his love for Allah and his Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The love, his love for Allah and his Messenger. He was absolute about that. He was very sure about that. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I know this, that I have nothing, but I love you, and I love Allah, and this even more than my own self. And, and look at another thing, when Sahaba heard this statement, when Prophet ﷺ hearing this, he said that, that a person will be with those who he loves, so all Sahaba were, were delighted, all Sahaba were excited. Why? Because every single person, they knew that they love Allah and His Messenger وسلم, more than anybody else. So this is very amazing. This is very, very interesting. I mean, this is something that we all have to ponder upon. We all have to reflect on. Right? Because there was not even a single person who thought that love of Allah and His Messenger might be uh, less than any other, other person. Right? None. Everybody was delighted and Sahaba said that we were not delighted more than that day because they knew now what their, where, where they're going to end, where, what they're ending because they knew that they will be with Allah and His Messenger on the Day of Judgment and this is all what they wanted, right? And another incident that happened, it's also in Bukhari, that a man came to the, uh, to the, uh, to the, to the, to the Prophet uh, of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Oh Allah's Messenger, what do you say about a man who loves some people but cannot catch up with their good deeds? He said, what do you say about a man who loves some people but cannot catch up with their good deeds? And listening, uh, uh, replying to this question of this person, Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the same statement, Al-Mar'u ma'a man ahabba, that a, mer- a person will be with those whom he loves. And this, this second story gives us a hope, right? 
He says that we, all of us wish that, or many of us wish that we were at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. But it cannot happen. And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, has a reason for why we are not from, from those people. Somebody said that if we were from those people, possibly we could have been from the hypocrites. Because the, 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 the test that the Sahaba went through and the, and the condition that they were in, I mean, we couldn't even, I, I don't know, I mean, what our state could have been. But what we can do is at least we can wish that if we were from those people, then we would have loved Allah and His Messenger and would have sacrificed everything for the sake of Allah and Messenger on, uh, during that day and during that time as well. So just because of that intention, if we have that intention in our, in our hearts, then this is a glad tidings from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Al-Mar'u Ma'aman Ahabba that a person will be with those who he loves. Right? And this is something also, like it's very important as we, I've been saying for some time, that when we hook up ourselves to a chain of scholarship, right? There's a chain, there's a, tradi- there's a tradition. We have our teachers, and those teachers uh, have their teachers, and those teachers have their teachers, and this chain goes back all the way to the Prophet wasallam. And one of, and one of many blessings is that, that we love and respect our teacher, right? And our teacher love and respect their teacher, and so on, to the Prophet And because of the student-teacher relationship, and because of the respect and the adab that I've been talking about for so long now, the adab and respect and the love that we can have for, in our hearts for our teacher, so that can just be based on this hadith and maru ma'aman habba that we can assure that, that we will be with our teachers, right? And those teachers will be with their teachers, and those teachers will be with their teachers, and this chain can, will go all the way up to the Prophet wasallam. And this gives us again a lot of hope, right? That we might not be able to achieve the state of the Sahaba Karam. But just loving our teachers, our scholars, our mashayikh, that will help us being in that company, right? Because there will be a group, there will be a line, and people will be standing in, in behind a certain group of people, right? And that, uh, based on this hadith, those people who will be standing behind another group of people will be, with, will be that, 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 that those, will be those that, that, that these people loved, right? So this is another um, uh, advantage of doing other than respect of, of, of our teachers, right? And the next thing is that, I, in fact, I did mention it in, in our last gathering, that we should guard our love. We should guard our love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us one heart, and this heart is there to love, right? And we should guard it. And this heart cannot have two loves at the same time. Either it will have love for Allah, or it will have love for dunya. There, is, there can be no third thing, no third love that can enter this heart, right? And, and, and every other love that we have is an offshoot of either love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or love of this dunya. There is no, I mean if we can just if we think about it, we love the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa because he is the messenger of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to love him, right? We love the Sahaba because they were the companions of the Messenger of Allah. We love our husbands because Prophet of Allah وسلم, has ordered us to do that. We love our wives because Prophet of Allah وسلم, has ordered us to do that. We love our children because Prophet of Allah وسلم, has ordered us to do that. We love our parents because Prophet of Allah وسلم, has ordered us to do that. So we can, we can check our love in our hearts. If we have love for somebody or something, and we, we, we can always, we have a criteria, we can always check back if the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has allowed that love or he has ordered that love. If that is the case, this is an offshoot of the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. 
But at the same time, if you love some, I don't know, some movie stars, right? Or if you love our our new cars, or if you love, or we love, quote unquote, I'm saying love. Our heart is indulged in in our in our in our luxury homes, right? Or if our love is for our jewelry, or if our love is for our new dresses and our shoes, right? We can check back. I mean, we have a criteria. I mean, it's, I'm not saying like having clothes or, or, or jewelry or, or having dresses or shoes is this a lot. But we should not have love of those things in our, in our heart. So if our best of the dresses, they, for example, they get damaged, we should just say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. This was something that Allah gave me and He has taken, away back, taken it back. So it belonged to Allah, He, had taken it, he has taken it back, so, so what? Right? So, so we should not have love, and this, this is something this is allowed, and then there are things that are disallowed, that are haram, right? When Prophet Allah has, has stopped us from doing something, as, as we mentioned in our last class, not to look at certain people, right? And it includes live people and people on the screen, right? So, and then and on top of that, a'udhu billah, thumma a'udhu billah, we develop love for those people. First of all, it's, it's haram to do that, and then we develop love, which is like, uh, uh, what says it's an ignorance over an ignorance, right? An oppression over an oppression. There's a light upon light, and there's an opposite to that. Like we, there's one ignorance, and there's another ignorance. There's one oppression, and then we are oppressing ourselves by by creating love in our hearts for those people, right? So this is something we can always check. There can be love for Allah or love for dunya, and all of these things are are, are, are under the category of love of dunya, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has forbidden us. From, from having love, love of dunya in our heart, right? So, we have to work hard for this. This is not something that can come overnight, right? And the purpose of this, these gatherings, these sessions that we have, is to attain just that. It's, it's I mean, we, 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 as I said, that we are learning Arabic as a tool to learn Quran and Hadith, so that we be able to understand Quran and Hadith, and we be able to understand the the wisdom behind that, and the, and and then we be able to act upon that. We so that we can know what pleases Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, what displeases Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This is, the, this is the tool that we are learning to, to attain. Our goal is not urban, right? So, so we have to work hard because we have two enemies. One enemy is shaitan, as we all know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that shaitan is your enemy and take him as your enemy. This is an order of Allah. And the second thing is that that our nafs, our own lower, uh, our, our desires, our lower self is our enemy. It's a bigger enemy. Why? Because, I mean, say for example, if, if there is, is, is a robber and he wants to, to steal from somebody's home, and for example, the, the watchman or the guard of that home, he makes a deal with that robber. And you know what? I'll let you know. Where are, the, where are the keys? I'll let you know where is the jewelry. I'll let you know that where do they keep their money, right? If he, he, he makes a deal with the robber, then it's very easy for the robber to steal, go and steal things, right? And if the guard tells the robber, you know, this, these people leave their home at this and this time, so you come at this and this time, and I'll let you, I'll, I'll, I'll help you in everything. So this is a bigger, this guard, and now it becomes a bigger enemy. Why? Because because now he's helping the, the, the enemy from the outside, right? And if he had not helped the other enemy, that it would have made the robber difficult to steal, come because he, first of all, he will not know when are these people leaving the house, and second, he has to work hard to find out all, where all the things are, right? So our nafs is a bigger enemy because it helps shaitan, if it's not controlled, if it's not kept in check, to, to do the, the shaitani acts, right? So, so we have to watch our nafs, right? We have to control it. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in, in the Quran, "Wa nafsin wa ma sawaha fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha." That that by the nafs, 
and who created it that I have inspired in this love the good and the bad, the knowledge of the good and the bad. So we know what's good, what's bad based on Quran and Sunnah. Right? But at the end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad aflaha man zakkaha. That he is successful who has purified himself. Waqad khaba man dasaha and he is loser who is not able to achieve the purification of the self. So the self is a bigger enemy and we have to work hard on that, right? Because we have been indulged in so many things that is helping our nafs, right? And, and all these, the things that are around us, they are also created in a way that is detrimental to, our, to, to, the, to the destruction of our nafs, right? For example, we, we, we drive on, on Jumeirah Beach Road, for example. There are beautiful houses on both sides of the road. And we are driving and we are indulged into looking at, you know what, I wish that I, 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 can, I, I can have this kind of a house. There are cars driving by and we are looking at the cars, you know, I wish that I can have, I could have that car. Right? We, we, we are walking, we are driving down Shane's side and there are big billboards out there, right? I wish I could have that perfume or I wish I could have that jewelry. Or I wish I could be like the, the this, 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 this woman out there, right? And the men have other problems that we, are, we have spoken about. So the, the, the atmosphere around us is very dangerous, right? They are, and our, because we are totally focused on these things, and these things are penetrating into our heart. And what the result, the end result is the love, the love that's coming into our heart is the love of the dunya. And we have been asked not to do that, not to, not to have that. But the people of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do they do? What do they do? They also look at things. We have not, we have, we have not been ordered to close our eyes. But we, what we have been ordered not to look at are two things. One, at opposite genders. Right? قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُدُّوا مِنَ أَفْصَارِهِمْ And then later on قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغُدُّوا مِنَ أَفْصَارِهِنَّ Tell the believing men and the believing women to lower their gaze. Why? Because they are not supposed to look at each other that they are not related to. Number one. Number two that they are not allowed to look at is the vanities of the non-believers. Because if we keep looking at the vanities of the non-believers, then the love of these things will come into our heart. These are the only two things in the Qur'an that we have not allowed to look at. But what we are ordered in fact to look at are the signs of Allah. The trees, the sky, the mountains, the rivers. Right? Because they, they tell us about the, about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to look at them with that intention to look at this tree how beautiful is that right no single person can, is able to make anything like this tree look at the sky it's so vast and and how vast will be the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinking about how big is this earth and how amazing is this earth which is revolving at such a great speed but still we don't even feel if we are moving Right? If there is a little, uh, the, the wheel of the car gets out of balance, it starts wobbling. But this earth which is moving at such a great speed, it's not even moving, we don't even feel we are walking. So we have to look at all of these things with that, with that intention. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا مَقْعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ The people of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who remember Allah sitting down, standing up, laying down on their side. These can be only three positions that a man, a person can be in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these people are in deep remembrance of Allah in all three states that they can be in. And what do they do? وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ They ponder upon the creation of the heavens and the earth. Right? And then after pondering, they get into a deep state and this is رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلَ Oh Allah, Oh our Lord, You have not created all of this in vain. There is a purpose behind that. Right? There is a purpose behind that. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be. Not to look at all the other things that, that puts the love of this dunya in our heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants 
that this heart that I have given you, it is to love me and the things that I have ordered you to love. That's the only thing and that are, those are the offshoots of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And when a person gets into the remembrance of Allah, when he gets into the state that he's remembering Allah all the time, standing, sitting, laying down on their sides, when he's, he's with his, 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 his husband or his wife, he's still is not neglectful of Allah. When he's with his children, with her children, they are not neglectful of Allah. When they're out walking in the park, they're not neglectful of Allah. Right? When in their hotel rooms, alone, they're not neglectful of Allah. When they're alone in their houses, they're not neglectful of Allah. When person gets into that state, right, then it becomes very easy to follow the orders of Allah. Then it becomes very easy. And that is the reason that when these Sahaba, right, they were, they, when drinking alcohol was permitted, they were drinking, right, it was permitted. But once the order came in the Quran, right, in al Khamru, Wal Maisiru, Wal Ansabu, Wal Aslamu, Ridsum, Min Amali Shaitan, that, 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 that the alcohol and all the other things are from, from the, from the deeds of Shaitan, Fajitani Ruhu, one word, one word, an order. Stay away from them. One single word. And the Sahaba who had these like pots of alcohol in their houses, they, they took it out and just, just broke the pots. Right? And the, the streets of Medina were full of like there were, there were alcohol flowing on the streets. What happened? One single word. Right? Today, if somebody is, is addicted to alcohol, if, if he thinks that doctors advise him it's, it's dangerous to your health, you have to leave it, he has to go through a whole process. He has to get like, get all these vaccines and I don't know what, right? They, they have to spend like so much time to leave that because if they leave it overnight, they will, they will become sick. They will start shaking because they are so much addict to that. These people were addicts. But once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Faj, tani, hu, hu, one single word and order, leave it, they left it. And nothing happened because love of Allah was engraved in their hearts. When the, 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 the women in Medina, right, they, there was no order of hijab, and, 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 and when so much so in the time of ignorance, they were even walking with, 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 without, uh, without having their, their tops, right? The hour of hijab came and, and it is narrated in a hadith that as soon as the hour of hijab came, right, that you cover yourself, every single woman ran to, to find something that, that, that she could cover herself with. This was love of Allah in their heart. And this came through remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trying that they could be in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Right? So once love of Allah comes in the heart, then it becomes very easy to, 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 uh, to follow the orders of Allah and His Messenger. And the problem with us is that the love of dunya is engraved and it is it's like deep into our hearts and it's so difficult to take it out and put love of Allah in our hearts. And it can only come through the members of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We have to be in, we have to try to be in a state when we are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. We are walking, we are sitting, we are, li- we are laying down, we are in our homes, we are in our car, we are in the masjid, wherever we are. This is what we should try to do. And this is what, and because this is haram to be, have love of dunya in our heart. This is absolute, this is no way that we can have that. Right? And this is why, and, and, and the thing is that al-mar'u ma'a man ahadba, that a person will be with those who he loves. So if we want to be with our favorite movie stars on the Day of Judgment, we don't know where are they going, Allah knows. But it's our own choice that if we want to be with them, we, if we want to be with standing behind them on, 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 in the line, it's a risk that we are taking. But if we are loving Allah and His Messenger, there is no risk, right? So we know where we are going to end. We are going to end in the neighborhood of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Jannah inshaAllah. So this is something that we all need to work on. There is no choice. There is no choice. Before we die, we have to achieve this state and we have to ask Allah. We have to get up at the hajjit and, and, and cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that state, that, that love of Allah and His Messenger is more than any single thing in our hearts. This is what we all have to cry for. 
right? And then it becomes so easy to follow the orders of Allah. It so becomes so easy to, to lower our gaze. It becomes so easy to, 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 to cover ourselves. It becomes so easy to, to leave the things that we have been doing for our, throughout our lives that are not allowed. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to, to, uh, to achieve the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. The next hadith that I want to cover is like, because we have not much time left, so that is hadith number five, which is Al Majalisu Bil Amanati. Al Majalisu Bil Amanati. And this is narrated in Abu Dawood. Al Majalis is the plural of Majlis. Right? It's a Jama Mukassar. You might have studied that in your Arabic. Majalis is the plural of Majlis. And it means gatherings. Bil Amanati means that uh, that gatherings are trust. Amana is trust. And another, like, tra- it can also be translated as, as it's written in the book, that gatherings are to be kept in confidence. So, this is also a very uh, beautiful hadith. Of course, all the hadiths are beautiful. And the thing is, that it's also very practical. That in our deen, in our religion, when two individuals, they talk about something, Right? If there is a, there's a one person talking to another person and they discuss something, by default, the thing that they are talking about is a trust, is a secret between these two people. Unless the second person says you, you're allowed to go and tell this to other people as well. Otherwise, by default, it is a secret between those two people. Right? The one, the second person, there is no need for the second person to tell the first person that please, by the way, don't tell it to anybody else. So the gatherings are to be kept in confidence. Right? This is an amana, this is a trust. That, that when two people talk about something, in, 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 when they're alone, it is a trust that they have to keep. Right? So when if we go and tell that thing to another third person without first person knowing that he is going to tell it to the third person, he is kind of breaking the trust, right? And this is breaking not the trust with that person, it's breaking a trust with Allah and His Messenger. Why? For the same reason as I said in the beginning that we have to go and look at because the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that gathering that to be kept in confidence. So if we break this trust is breaking trust with the messenger of Allah and breaking the trust with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is breaking the trust with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so this is very important and just in the, in the same uh, for the same topic i mean i don't have to tell i mean but but just want to emphasize on this point is that whatever husband and wife talk to each other that's also something that's a trust Right? What, what, what we people do in this time and age that, uh, just talking about sisters, that the, the, the women, they, they go and tell what's happening in their house to their mothers and, and to their sisters and, and all the friends that they have. Right? So that, that was a trust until and unless there is a need that they are having some issues and they are having some problems. Right? And for the intention of to solve that issue or a problem, if you, if you feel, if we feel that somebody can help us out to solve that issue, right? There is no way that we can tell what's, what's in the house to, uh, to tell it to, to, to other people. That, that can be the only intention if we are, we are telling somebody. So that if we are having this issue, so can somebody help me out? Can give some, somebody give me an advice that this is what's happening? So please let, let me know what should I do, right? So otherwise there is no way that a husband and a wife when they talk some, about something in their house that should that be told outside the, uh, to, to anybody outside the house. This is, very, this is very common that happens in this day and age, right? And 
Also, it comes in the hadith about like a, it, it's a very big warning for a, for, for a husband who talks about uh, about his relationship with his wife, the, the intimate relationship with his wife to any of the other people. It is a big warning for, 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 for that person. And also, it is not allowed for a woman to go back to her husband and talk and talk about the looks of her friend in front of her husband, right? For example, there are, th- there are sisters who are doing hijab, right? And they take off hijab in front of other women, and and now, the, of course, the other other women knows about her looks and how the, her hair hair are and stuff like that, right? How was she how was she dressed up? How was she looking? It is disallowed, it's haram that this woman goes back and tells her husband that what the other uh, woman was looking like or what, how does she look like because the picture of that woman can come in, when she's explaining it can come in the mind of that, that, that man, right? and this sister is doing hijab for a purpose it's doing hijab that nobody looks at her and she be, she be, uh, she be saved, right? and now this, the, 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 the friend of hers she is doing, she is just basically breaking all of that She's going and explaining to, to her husband, or worse, uh, even worse than that, to another man who, who is not even related to her. Right? She's doing two bad things. One, she's telling about her, her, her friend who is not uh, like the, 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 how she looks like, and second, she's talking to a man who she's not related to. Anyway, so this is something that we also have to be very careful about, because this is also something that, is, that we, we don't uh, are concerned about in this day and age. And the next thing is Al-Majalis of Al-Amana that the gatherings are to be kept in confidence is, or, or uh, taking the first translation that the gatherings are, are trust, right? Is uh, what our teachers say is that that this is a trust in a way that we will be asked about this, this gathering. What kind of gathering are you in? On the day of judgment there will be few people Who will be so? Uh, who will be feeling bad about the gatherings that they were in in, in the dunya? And those gatherings were of where uh, the 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 message, the Allah's name, and it's the messenger of Allah's name was not taken, or they were not discussed, and they were they were only having a coffee party or a tea party, right? And they were talking about all the stupid things except taking the name of Allah and His Messenger. So people will feel, they will wish that, that they would not have been in those gatherings, right? So gatherings is a trust that in, a, in a way that we should be very careful about what, ga- what gathering are we in and what are we talking about, number one. Number two is that, that whatever we, 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 we hear in that gathering, it becomes like a trust on us to act upon the, the, the right things that were that we uh, heard in that gathering. For example, we are having this class right now, right? It is a trust on me that I should be telling you things, right, that I, uh, that I know of, right? I should prepare for this lecture, right? I should try to deliver this lecture in a way that you are able to understand that, right? So all of these kind of things, it's a trust on me, it's a trust for me that I have to keep the trust and the trust on you is that you, when you are now listening to whatever, what is, whatever is being said, now you have to take it back and try to inculcate in your lives. Now you are not ignorant anymore. Now you know the things that you might possibly not have, have not known before, right? So the trust on you, the, the, the trust of this gathering for, for you is that you take it back and try to, try to work hard to put that in your lives. So al majalis bil amanati. So gatherings are are a trust, or they are to be kept in confidence. So may Allah subhanahu wa taala give us the tawfiq that we be able to also understand and, and this this hadith as well and try to put that in our lives. Wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Jazakumullah khair. Any questions?